everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hey ho. Autumn, not far away now. I suppose you could say it's been a quiet August. August. It's supposed to be hot and sunny, but it very rarely is. So I'm just going to do a sketch of some of the um, flowers and leaves and things that are around at the moment, all going into their later stages before the winter, before the autumn, first of all arrives. So let's see what we can do. I think I'll we'll start with a butterfly over here. I'm using a very soft pencil, um, well it's a 4B, um, because I think it's actually easier to draw with a soft pencil, especially if you're drawing on watercolour paper. You don't have to really put any pressure on the paper. I've got a couple of references, so if you see me creaking my chair or reaching over, that's because I'm just uh, reaching for my reference material. I sometimes use um, book covers as a uh, reference material, and I have one here, The Therapeutic Garden by Donald Norfolk. That's a book, I don't know, 20 years old or so. It's all about the benefits of gardening. I think I can understand the benefits of having a garden, but I would sooner somebody else looked after it. I've got plenty of ideas, but not enough strength or energy anymore to garden, really, i sad to say. Also, I don't know if anyone else has got this, but I have a, a kind of um, mold allergy. I'm drawing a clematis flower here, um, which um, is made worse by digging in the garden because there's so much mold in the soil, isn't there? That's going to be mauve. Thank you. 
here we have blackberries. know whether you have blackberries in uh, in the States. Sure, sure you do. You must have cultivated ones anyway, if not wild ones. They're one of the great joys of the English and the French, North France anyway, countryside. You can go and grab them out of the hedgerows. We've always got a few pots of Black currant jam in the larder. Going to come in with a couple of oak leaves here. Brittany is um, a great part of the world for the oak. We've got quite a few in our garden. And they have obviously these acorns which drop in the autumn. And uh, the sheep absolutely adore them. When you let them into the field where the acorns have been falling, they go crazy for them. They really like them. oak leaves obviously have these very indented um, edges. One year we had so many acorns fall and it was before we had the sheep and in the spring they all grew and the whole field was full of baby oaks. It's insane. <laughs> and to put a dragonfly here. Because it's not quite winter yet, or even late autumn, there's a few um, flowers still on the black currants.
And here we have some honeysuckle, which has got petals like that. I think we'll put a a bee there. And here we'll just have a daisy. I'm just trundling along on the ground here. We we'll pop in a little snail. And this is Ivy. With its characteristic three pointed leaves. Now, when we come to paint this, I'll probably end up inking it and we'll see how it goes. Thank you. 
some of those um, papery things that uh, grow dry at this time of year. I can't remember what they're called. Down here we could have some honesty. That would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Those papery leaves, these are papery too. Maybe just coming up here we'll have a uh, dry seed head from a poppy. Maybe we'll have two. another little bee here heading off in this direction and we'll leave a space in the middle perhaps for some kind of slogan or motto we might write something in the middle there or you could even if I don't. So we're going to do this in kind of autumnal colours. So let me think. We want burnt sienna. We need um, olive green, I think, to make it easier. some quinacridone gold and we will want I think alizarin crimson alizarin crimson uh, can't quite tell if that's what this is yes that's a 
it does remain crimson with a bit of purple in it. And um, to help us with our greens and things, we'll take the um, cobalt blue or ultramarine. I can't quite lay my hands on the cobalt at the moment, so perhaps I'll just use ultramarine. And we might want Potter's pink. We might want some dark brown, that's Van Dyke brown. So those are the colours that we're using. Get rid of that and I need a little bit of palette space. And I think I'll use my water brush today. Which is here. Ah, oh, there's the cobalt. It's over there in the photo shoot. So I have a choice now, I can either use one or the other. So, and we need our piece of toweling to dab the brush on in between different colors. And uh, let's check, have we got any water in here? No, it's pretty empty. I'll just grab my clean water. There we are, all dry, all done. And pop the water there, although we won't need much of it because we're using a water brush. And the color, so the color palette is these ones here. Basically, I'm going to be using this as a kind of color guide. There's a quote on the back of this um, jacket, book jacket. It says, by someone called John Clare who wrote something, a poem called I Am, and it says, I long for scenes where man has never trod, a place where a woman never smiled or wept, there to abide with my creator God, and sleep as I in childhood sweetly slept, untroubling and untroubled where I lie, the grass below above the vaulted sky which is rather lovely. So we will start with, let me see, let's start with the green because we want to start with, I think it's probably easiest to start with the leaves. And whatever green you're using, if you want to make it more autumnal, then you would probably want to add a little bit of burnt sienna. Now, this is the first time of using this water brush for me with, um, with autumn colors and doing this kind of thing because this is a new, a new um, experience. So, We'll see how it goes, but I'm going to be using my same the same technique that I always use, uh, which is, as you can see, it's easier to see than it is to describe, really. Um, now, if I remember rightly, blackberry leaves are often, often on the reddish side, so that adds a little bit more color to the side here where where the blackberries are. That adds, well not color, but it's all color, but a little bit more warmth. That's the word I was looking for. If you put just a little dash of red into the green. And then the blackberries, of course. Um, <clears throat> this time of the year, they're not really quite ripe. So they're on the green side.
and they vary. We've got a bush just not far from the studio here and uh, this time of year they vary. Some of them are quite green and some of them are quite edible, that is to say. Dark red, purple, like that. These little flowers might be on the pink side. Now the this butterfly up here, we're going to do that one in a sort of background is going to be sort of beige like that. I'm going to keep it really simple and I'm going to put a dark brown in the middle of his body and then I'm going to drop dark brown on the outer edge like that. And we'll let that bleed. Then this plant here is a very dark blue with a touch of red. So we'll pop that colour in there, which makes a nice contrast with that green, doesn't it? And then the reverse edge, which is turned up, it's going to be lighter, so I'll just put some water in there and let that bleed. And then we'll go back to the stem. And put the stem all the way up there. And then the leaves. So when you're using, whichever brush you're using, just press down, start at the top, that's to say the pointy end, and um, just press down to release the water. There we are. And we could, we could put, as you go along, if you feel you want to add more, you can, can't you? You can just add another stem and then pop in another bud if you feel you want to, like that. Maybe another leaf. Going that way, perhaps. And I think we'll do the um, dragonfly next, and we'll do it in a kind of rusty yellow. and then we'll do his his body in brown just put him in the segments like that and then down here we've got the oak leaves which at this time of the year are still definitely green. Lovely dark, rich dark green the oak is. Always late losing their leaves. As you go along and you're doing something like this, just vary the greens. Every time you do a leaf, you know, just change the colour that you're using at least once. 
I think when I'm when I'm doing a botanical like this, I tend to use ready mixed greens. When I'm doing other paintings, it depends on what. Sometimes I use no green at all. I just um, use a uh, blue and and, and yellow of some sort to mix the green. But when you're doing a lot of green, it's, sometimes it's easier if you just have a, one ready mix. And I quite like olive. Olive green is good. This is. Uh, Van Dyke brown, or it could be burnt umber, um, and I'm just doing the cups of the um, acorns, and then the actual acorn itself, I'm going to use burnt sienna. So there's another ready mixed brown, burnt sienna. And we have another oak leaf here. So all of each one of these is different. And that's what makes your painting look professional, just by varying the color. Colors of the uh, things in it, in your painting. Um, now the honeysuckle is going to be a sort of yellow color so we'll use quinacridone gold for that. And then we want a little bit of pink dropped in. So I'm going to use Potter's pink for that. Keep it nice and soft. And Potter's pink has a, a granulating effect so that gives texture. But if you haven't got it, you could use permanent rose or even alizarin crimson, very well watered down. Got a little bee sitting up there looking as if he wants to be painted. So we'll take a very dark color, first of all, for his head, and then one segment, and then the second segment. And the color I picked up there is probably a little bit of black and some ultramarine, which is fine. And we'll let that dry a little bit. But meanwhile, while it's drying, we'll just make sure my brush is nice and wet and I'll just pull out the wings like that. And then we want some thick quinacridone gold for the rest of the body like that. And we let that bleed. Don't fuss with it. And in the legs. And we'll put the antennae in later. Okay, so then for the Honesty up here, we want basically blue because it's more or less transparent, that stuff, isn't it? And that's about as close as we're going to get. I think, I think if I remember rightly, I'm making this up because I don't, there isn't any in my reference material, so I'm just, I think it has kind of, I don't know, something like that going on. Oh, mustn't forget my tea. Hmm. I think I had a little bit too much water on my bee there. I'm going to just block that. Just blot him down like that and then when he's dry I'll correct him. I'll leave him like that for now. And okay, so down here we have some daisies or something like a daisy. So just pop the stems in first. And then in my reference material, it's got a sort of orangey yellow center. So some nice strong quinacridone gold 
will do that fine. Don't need anything more complicated than that. And then we need a little bit of very pale blue. Doesn't matter if it's um, cobalt or ultramarine. And then we're just going to put some indications of the petals there. Just the shadows now. Oh, look what's popped up here. There's a snail. We'll paint him a reasonably nice dark colour. A bit of quinacridone gold in there, perhaps. And then his body, on the other hand, is more brown. Dark brown. There we are, he looks quite nice. Should we put the leaf underneath him? He's probably wanting to crawl on the leaf. And um, okay, so the uh, up here, what have we got? We've got a very nice dark red, red and purple, red, purple, not red and purple. A dark red, um, clematis. Is that clematis or I think it is. That's going to have some quinacridone gold popped into the middle of that. And there's another one up here, so we'll do this one a little bit lighter. And here we have those um, things I can't remember the names of. called using cobalt blue and um, potter's pink the stems are probably going to be on the brown side so we'll pop those in I think they're a good autumn thing so the leaves on that are probably going to be going brownish. And uh, come in again with that. And down here, this has still got green leaves. And then the ivy is very much this colour. And if we want to make it a little bit darker, we can add some of that purple to the base. And the stems. If you want to darken the bottom edge, just drop it in. 
Then when that's dry, we can add an, well, when it's nearly dry, we can add a, a light a yellowish color around the border because um, some ivies are variegated. So if we want to do a variegated one, you can do it like that. would be, I don't know if this is going to work, I think it might. Just a little bit of quinacridone gold. And then the, um, oh look, there's another bee. Let's see if I can get that one right. I think I put the yellow in too soon, that was the thing. So I'll wait with that one. It seems to be dry now, so we come back with the quinacridone gold. And now I'll restrain myself and wait before I put the black in the middle. And um, on this ivy, I think ivy has quite pronounced veins so while that's wet you can just draw in with a cut credit card and I recommend an Ikea card. They seem to work best. You can do that with all of your um, leaves if you want to do that while they're still wet. Okay so we'll put quinacridone gold in there for the centre of that. And then we have um, the poppy heads, which are going to be a sort of dark blue. Like this. And put a little bit of quinacridone in there for bottom of that and the stems and then maybe that's um, that's um, Van Dyke brown mixed with ultramarine and we'll just put some vertical lines like that and now we are back to ivy. Another way you could do it, you could start with the lighter color. That is probably a more efficient way of doing it. And then put the dark green in on top. And then fetch your Ikea card. The veins. And then here we've just got, I don't know what I was planning to do with this, but it obviously needs something on it, doesn't it? We put some leaves on there. I think we could probably get away with another one of these purpley flowers. This is just some leaves. Okay, well, we're nearly done. We need to fix this B. And he needs 
fixing two. There we are. And we'll put the antennae in with a pen. Okay, so that's the end of that stage. And now I'm going to ink pen and the legs for that one and if you want to give you don't have to it doesn't absolutely have to have any kind of line but you can obviously put in a lot more detail if you come in with a pen things like the little dots on the acorn cups which you can't very easily do with with paint and if you feel you've made a mistake you can often correct the mistake or you can correct the shape um, yeah you can do lots of things you can put the stamens on the inside of something because I've done this quite small obviously uh, The details are hard to paint in, so it's easier to use a pen if you want to do that, but you don't have to. And then here, I think it would be nice to write a slogan, something like um, Quiet August or whatever you felt like writing. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there and call that done, except for the words. So there's the final painting and I hope you enjoyed that. I think it would make a lovely um, page in a journal and would also look good as a cover for a sketchbook or something like that, as well as being a great design for something like a laminated placemat or a tray liner, if you did it a bit bigger and ran it through the laminating machine. <coughs> Um, you can also see a few ideas here for writing a message <clears throat> or a title or a slogan in the middle of the space I left or you could just fill that space with more flowers. So anyway, I'll leave you with that as today's project and I hope you have fun with the first of our late summer ideas. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a like and any comments or questions you might have, please put them in the comments below as well as clicking on the subscribe and notifications buttons Plus, coming soon, channel membership for those of you who are interested in supporting us and getting extra perks in exchange. So keep your eyes peeled for more information about that. And uh, for the moment, I'll let you go and I'll say bye-bye for now. See you again soon, hopefully tomorrow. So bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.